Hi, good afternoon and welcome to Scholar Thread Ministries Times of Refresh. And we just take like to take this opportunity to invite each and every one of you to come on and join with us as we enter into God's presence. As also we discuss God's word and be blessed, right, by what the Lord is about to say. So yesterday was Indian arrival. I hope you all were safe. We were glad for the holiday. A lot of people felt as though today was Monday, but you know, thank God it's not Monday, it's Wednesday, right? So we're halfway through the week. So we'll just open up with a word of prayer and then um, we'll start the discussion. So Heavenly Father, <laughs> bless your name this afternoon, we honor you. Lord, tonight we say, oh God, that you are majestic, oh God, Heavenly Father. You reign on high, oh God, Heavenly Father. You are ruler, you are our leader, you are our protector, you are our guide guidance of God, Heavenly Father. Lord, we just thank you for many blessings. We thank you, Lord, for using us this time in the ministry of God, Heavenly Father. And we thank you, God, for everything, oh God, that you're about to do, great and mighty, oh God, Lord. And Heavenly Father, tonight we dedicate this broadcast into your hands. We say, have your will. Let your will be done, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Indian arrival, they go, eh? I played cricket yesterday. I arrived on, on the cricket field yesterday. Any rain? Any rain? It didn't have any rain in the morning. It didn't have a um, rain. We bat first, and it didn't have any rain and thing. And then rain came after lunch, and then from there we went on and uh, and do our thing. Um, I want to welcome my partner from New York, Alwyn, who long here mm -hmm. on vacation. Uh, I was supposed to go out online with them today and postpone this the, and this um and this thing because I ain't seen for a long time, but. The way circumstances had it, um, I, I, I wasn't able to go out with him and chill out and thing. But anyway, I'm going to make up for that the next day. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So since last week, I, I, I come up with this, um, I, 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 I work on that topic because I see a lot of situations going on with couples, um, you know, couples breaking up. I see in situations where married, uh, you know, when I say couples, um, I'm, 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 I'm boyfriend and girlfriend, and they're having problems, I see in situations where um you find um husbands and wife having problems in the relationships and the marriage and thing and um i i i, I know i've seen a lot of strange relationships and a lot of things happening that shouldn't happen and husbands are allowing certain things to go on which should not you know it's similar to what i spoke about and nicholas the um the disciple the the and deacon how well when fellas was looking at his wife and and um was attracted to his wife they he um he just leave and leave the wife and and um and because he wanted to serve Jesus so much that he wasn't protecting his wife and he just said, Look, anybody want to marry my wife and go and go and marry her. And I realized a lot of that situation going on now. Not only in Trinidad and Tobago, but all around the world. Because when you look on Facebook and you see the amount of problems people having in marriages and relationships, the and the, and the, the, the a lot of stuff, the, you know, a, a lot of misunderstanding. And what a lot of people don't realize is that if you have a jealous wife and, and, and she's innocent, I spoke about that last week about the laws and things, then, and, and there are certain things they do. But if you have a, if, if, what a lot of people don't realize is that the husband and the wife, the devil attack both of them. So the husband might be doing anything wrong. And the wife now, on the other hand, might be doing anything wrong. But because Satan attacking your mind, and because your mind playing so much games and you're, and, and you have things going on in your mind, you, and you know, you stop showing the person love and affection and things. So that is where the topic of today's discussion came from. Um, when we discussed that, and I was looking for a title, the title, you know, the 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 the, the, the discussion be, is, is taken from First Peter chapter four and verse eight, where Peter, where Peter spoke about love each other fervently. We are speaking about people, about a, a man and the whole, but it includes husband and wife too. Where he said to love uh, um, fervently, <clears throat> fervently, and love covers a multitude of sins, right? But that is not the topic today. The 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 um the the topic I was looking for something, and this even I came up with um when your heart's on fire. No, they, mm -hmm. and they have a song written by um by um by um Rick Conniff. When your heart's on fire, smoke gets in your eyes, right? And then Nat King Cole sang it and everybody, and nobody song. When your heart's on fire, smoke gets in your eyes. So, and the, and the topic of today's discussion, I want to use that long title, but I want to use 
the, and the, 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 the title, When Your Heart's on Fire, and I'm going to speak about that from the Bible. When Your Heart's Yo, when Y-O-U-R, not you are. When Your Heart's on Fire. So that's the topic of the discussion today. Um, and you know, I want to, I, 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 I want to um, speak about that because, and there's a lot of things happening and a lot of men are moving contrary. And I've had experiences of that to look up to this. I go to a function and I'm on, I, I go to get um, something for my, I'm, um, I'm, I'm Linda and I to drink. I'm on going on so long. Next to her, so long, talking like he want to get up. So I say, what, what going on here? So I, mm-hmm. I tap on and I say, here, yeah, what going on? Uh, I say, right to eat. And he had to get up. No, yeah. they care about other men. And it's not the woman doing something wrong or the woman unfaithful. Um, men just have no respect for other men's relationship. And they're just going after the woman. And foolish men now, insecure men, attacking the woman. They're getting vexed with, uh, uh, with the woman. And they um, stop showing them love and affection. Mm-hmm. And so it's not the woman to blame half of the time. A man might see somebody send out um, the wife a message. It, it's not necessarily the wife encouraging the person. The man just, you know, men and care. And women is the same thing too. So it's affecting a lot of relationships. And the, hence the reasons for my, my um, untitled today, when your heart's on fire, right? Smoke gets in your eyes. And it's not in a negative way because I heard uh, a guy use it already. He say, well, you know, when, when your heart's on fire, smoke and gets in your eyes and they make poor decisions. Mm-hmm. But today I want to show this <clears throat> in a positive light. From the scriptures and based on what um, um Peter said, and we'll you know we we look at Proverbs and a couple other scriptures and we see uh you know what 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 God was saying and how how God was moving, what God are recommending relationships, not only with your husband and your wife, your girlfriend, but also with your friends, your family, your church um um family, uh um your, and your grandchildren and people like that. So I will begin with first Peter chapter four and verse eight. Where Peter was speaking to in, in his first <clears throat> in his in, in this epistle or letter, Peter was speaking about a lot of different things. But early in, in, in chapter four of, of first Peter, um he spoke about how people are supposed to, to, to live together and, and live in harmony and things like that. And then in verse 8, he went on to say, And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the, the, the multitude of sins. So yet as Peter is saying. Above all, above everything, pri- uh, uh, you know, what should take pri- um, priority about all the things I spoke about, about, uh, you know, behaving and yourself in church by, um, you know, treating everybody in, 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 in a particular way and, 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 and following the, 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 the rules and the laws that, that the, 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 um, um, the letters of Peter and them spoke about as far as church life is concerned. He said, above all of that and above all things, have fervent charity. Or what you were saying above, above, uh, and you're pri- um, premier to everything, right? You say, have fervent charity. No, we know charity is translated as love. Char- a fervent there, it, it, it comes from our Greek word, eskenes. Eskenes, right? So eskenes means without ceasing, fervent. And that's what it means. And then, and then love, um, charity there you know, is, is, is what is translated as love, which is agape. Agape there is translated into the English as affection or benevolence, right? Affection is, is, is translated or, or, or is defined in the dictionary as a gentle feeling of fondness or liking or feeling or type of love. It is also expressed through physical affection, such as hugging and kissing. So Peter was saying now, above all these things, right? Don't stop showing a, 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 a fondness or a likeness if it's your wife. Um, and, 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 and your brothers, don't, don't stop showing kindness, right, among yourselves. So Peter was saying that. When I was preparing this, and this discussion, and Peter was saying, above all things, have fervent, and he say without ceasing, and fervent there means without ceasing, right, uh, or, or, or continuous. It means that it could stop. So a lot of people say, I've heard it said many times that, um, you, you know, people say that, um, you know, um, we... Um, I don't just fall out of love. Maybe you don't fall out of love, but you could stop showing affection towards the, 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 the people you love or, or stop showing affection and a likeness and, and, and you know, hugging and kissing the, 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 uh, and the people you're, you're, um, you're in relationship with, like your brother, your sister, your children, you'll be angry with your children. And, and nowadays, a lot of, a lot of couples um, 
speaking about the narcissist or, or narcissist um, 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 temperament or behavior where, they, where they, the spouse showing the other one a cold shoulder and, they, and they're not talking to them and they're just pulling themselves aside, they're touching them um, if they're sleeping or even close up, they're calling them or, 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 or whatever it is. And most of the time it's really to control. And you can't treat somebody like that really. But we all do at, at times. I did it already and people did it to me. And, and it's not something nice to do to somebody. So we have to continually show love, show kindness to our brothers and sisters, show affection to the ones we love. Um, but, you know, you kiss them, you hug yeah. them, and, and things like that. Why? Why should we, we do that? Because Peter went on to say in, in First Peter chapter 4 and verse 8, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Now, a lot of people look, I, I, I look at this... Um, um, uh, um, um, it meant here, perspective man again, go about the sins, but not really. Because Peter in this chapter was speaking about people, about, about you know, um, it cover, a cover. Love and affection hides, um, right, a multitude of sins. But you see, Yeah, back on. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. you back on your back um, on. connection, yeah, your connection got cut off. Yeah, I see my camera. I see my the lights in my camera just went off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so as I was saying now, um, um, we find, and I've I've noticed this and realized that a lot of times when, a lot of times when, if you if you we examine ourselves, if we do constantly love the person or show them affection. Or show them kindness and things like that. And you know what happened half of the time, Sarah? One of the things that happened half of the time is that we, we, we start to find fault in the people. Every time. Yeah. Every time you're finding fault. I, I remember I had, a, I, I had a, a, a student. She came to me. She said, after her mother died, right? She was talking to me. She came to me and she said, Glenn, you know, um, you're going through a depression. Because you go through 
at different stages of depression. If your wife died, obviously, you had to go through a depression, right? You love your wife. So I was going through certain stages of depression, uh, of, of the grieving process then. And, and this former student saw me, and she said, Glenn, you know, are you going through a depression? I said, well, she said, I'm looking at you and seeing how you're thinking. And, and, uh, I said, well, you know about depression? She said, I, I've depressed for a long time, and I've been depressed. I said, why? She said, my husband tell me again too fat, and he not trained my attention, and, or, or so fat, and uh, this and that. And she lost, mm -hmm. apparently, he, he wasn't sh showing her affection. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe it was and vice versa. So what happened? She lost her self-confidence, her self-esteem, and she started to be depressed. Uh, and you know what I'm saying? And, and, and people like that, the first person come along and, and, and pay a compliment, you find you would want to gravitate towards that person. And that is what causes a lot of unfaithfulness in marriages. And in relationships, a person showing you mm -hmm. more affection. So you cover, uh, you, uh, and, and you know, the person yeah. might have ulterior motives. So you yeah. have to understand now, love covers a multitude. Love covers a multitude, which is a lot of shortcomings, a lot of faults. So check yourself now. If you're having a relationship with somebody, your wife, your children, or whoever it is, or, or, or your friend, you know, all of a sudden you're, and you're finding um, your friend irritating you and you're seeing all set of flaws in them. Check to see if, 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 the relation, if, if, the, if you are loving them as much or if you don't love them as much. Because if Peter say constantly, or don't stop loving that person or showing them kindness. It means that you that you, you, you could stop loving somebody. Yeah. Because they could say, oh, I fall out of love. I love that person again. I fall out of love. Yes, it can happen based on what Peter said and said here in the Bible. So you can't fall out of love. But you can also, if you continue to show affection to that person and, and kindness, and you find it would do and those things uncover a multitude of, 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 of false shortcomings. Uh, you know, I remember some people would say, oh, you know, my wife this and my wife that and she getting old and she getting this and that. I say, well, I don't see nothing wrong with your wife. Right? And they say, well, you can't see nothing. You have to live with she. I say, but I don't have to live. I suppose to notice everything. I'm the wife hairdresser. And you're telling me how your wife thing and, 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 and that kind of thing. I know a fellow is a doctor. Right? He gave my tat tin, tin, tin woman so. The woman tin, tin, tin and skinny. And next thing you know, the next time I see them, the woman have and body parts, big, big, big all over seven. That can be Jim. What he do? He didn't like how she was looking. So every time he, he keeps sending her, she do a, 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 you know, a breast and a rear and a side and a hip. And the next thing you know, that's set a false body parts the woman have. But I know the woman you love. What you're showing her affection because of the body parts you're putting. And they even read. Yeah. yeah. So when you love somebody, you love that person for who they are, for what they do for, mm -hmm. um, and show them affection. Yeah. A lot of relationships end in, in discord and a lot of re relationships are broken because one party is not showing the other one constant affection, right? Or, 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 or they lose that love. It have a song called uh, I Lost That Love and Feeling. Yes, you lost it, um, you lost it but they could find it. And they could find it back. Just, keep, just show the person affection, the person showing you affection. And, and you know what's going to happen? You find the whole relationship will change. You will return to your first love. Who knows if when and Jesus was a, a, addressing the, the, the churches in the book of Revelation, he said, you have deviated and know your fault. You have deviated from your first love. What? They stopped showing Jesus the affection that they had before. When you just got saved, you accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. You only want to talk about him. You only want to tell people about the beauty of, 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 um, of, 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 of knowing Christ, of being born again. When they go to church, you're hustling. You want to get in the presence of the Lord. But what happened to you? You fall out of love with Jesus. You stop showing him affection, and that's why he, he, he probably said, I'm not saying he, he meant that, I'm saying he probably said that you, you, you have, have, have deviated from your first love. What is your first love? If a man who is born again, and we all know, we accept Jesus Christ because we love him, and when you're born again, and, and you start to know, know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you start to spend time with him, you, and you know what happened? You, you, you love him. To know him is to love him. That is a cliche, but, but, but to know who he is and what he does, I, I, I may continue. And you, you don't want to show him affection and love him. You don't want to hurt him. You, and you don't want to um, 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 hurt the Holy Spirit. You don't want to hurt God, your Father. Because you have, you, you have seen how good God is. You, and, and you have seen the benefits of, of God loving you. By sending his son, you receive salvation. You are justified by his resurrection. So I start up with husband and wife. But the reason I start up with husband and wife is because when we are born again and we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit come to abide in us. That is like a marriage. I spoke about um, if, a, if, if a, a, a man and a woman cohabit 
I once a man, I'm, I'm, I'm cohabit. The first time a, a marriage was mentioned in the Bible, it was translated as to cohabit, right? So when the Holy Spirit comes to cohabit with you or within you, what happens like a marriage is similar to a marriage. So if you, and, and, and a love relationship start, start to develop, you start to love the Lord, you start to, I want to please Him, you enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit, right? So what happens now? If you stop, if you stop showing Jesus' um, 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 fervent love all the time, you will start to find fault in the things of God. You start to find fault with the pastor. You start to find fault with the church. You start to find fault with the worship um, songs they're playing. You start to find fault with the words the pastor preaching. So fervent love, love fervently, fervent love covers a multitude of shortcomings and, and shortfalls. And if you love Jesus Christ, when you go to church, you're watching what the pastor saying, how the pastor wife dressed. How sister this come inside with her short pants? Because you love God so much and you constantly love him and show him that and that affection. You are seeing no fault in, in his um, um, um body. You are seeing yeah. no fault in the bride. Yeah. yeah. Because love covers a multitude of sins, a multitude of faults. Right? And it happens in marriages too. And not only as you use a start off with marriage, because I wanted to come here where our relationship with Jesus Christ is similar to marriage. He 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 mm. cohabits in us, with us, dwells in us. That, and that's why in the Old Testament, when Israel went after other gods, God called it adultery. And you commit adultery because God was cohabiting. God was cohabiting with Israel. So it was like a marriage. I, I, I mean, that's any point I'm making. And I'll show you something. Yeah. I'll show you something. You know why God hates marriage? I'll show you why God, I'm going to. I mean, divorce. I mean, divorce. I'm, I'll show you why God mm -hmm. I, I hate divorce. You ever observe that unless say you and Joel in a, in a, a marriage and you're in a relationship and you go on Netflix or something and it's showing you a movie where a wife is a husband being unfaithful unfaithful to the wife, you know you want to see that? I you ever noticed yeah. that? I don't want yeah, to see that. True. Because it's it, it changing that loving feeling you have. I don't want to see the, the, the wife unfaithful to the husband. Right? I don't want to see that. You know would, would, would be offended or, or feel upset or lose your peace if you see a movie. With the husband upset and the wife. Same thing goes for Facebook. When people are posting things and you're reading all them posts and people talk about, oh, my old man bad and my husband unfaithful to me, or my wife unfaithful to me, you just adopt that feeling. And you, you your mind has played so much tricks. You want to feel your, uh, your husband or your wife doing the same thing or your boyfriend. Mm -hmm. You understand the point I'm making? Yeah. That, and that's how yeah. the mind operates. The mind operates in such a way that, okay, I see this now. The mind, eh? and next thing you know, the, it processes in the brain and it starts to feel. A lot of times, a lot of relationship, a lot of husbands feel their wife unfaithful because of the of 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 of, 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 of what they, they, they focus on, of what they think about, of what they read, of what they see. Right? Yeah. Your wife is unfaithful to you, right? But, but but because you feel and you start, then you stop showing her affection. Then the first thing she would think now, when you stop showing her affection, you know, you must have an next woman, boy. Because he stopped showing me the love he had before. But yeah. because the husband and take authority and, and come out and tell you, I've what happened. I just, I, I, I just get in this kind of vibe. And let, you, and, and, and let her reassure you and say, listen, darling, I, I'm not in that. I, I love you and I'm, I'm faithful to you and I'm doing this. Why would say so? Because I will show me why you would think like that. Why you think I'm faithful. And, and when you check it, 90% of the time, Sarah, the husband don't even have evidence. Or don't even have something to show. Where the wife was unfaithful is our mind thing. That's how the devil attacking you. And, and I'll tell you uh, 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 what the adversary start doing. He start telling the wife now, right? Because the husband cold with you, the, the wife now start to think. He start, start to think now, you know, my yeah. husband must be somebody else. So the relationship mm -hmm. start to fragment. As the relationship fragment now, and you find a division going on with them, and people have problems and think their mar marriages break up. A lot yeah. of marriages break up because of miscommunication and people free. Man feel it too big to tell your wife, I feel you unfaithful and you know, uncomfortable with that. Right? And if the wife's smart enough, she will say, well, show me how I'm unfaithful. Well, I, would, I feel you unfaithful. So, yeah. so because you get a feel, that bad feeling you have. Right? Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a bad feeling. Because you might see a wife talking to somebody, it might be an old friend or whatever it is, well, walk up. Right, you, you, I, I see Linda be talking. Well, she had a, a, a life before, and before her husband died, and I had a life before my wife died. So she would know people. I know people. If I see her talking to somebody, so everybody she talked to is a relationship she having with them or had before. 
or everybody I talk to. No, I want you to do. You see the person. Let me tell. Let me tell all them. Let me to address all them men here. Let me, let me tell all them how I just move. If I see, right? If if I see my wife or girlfriend talking to somebody, and I watch any person and they're talking to them, and I find they easing up too much, I come in in the middle, and I say, "Excuse me, you know." And this is is, is my wife, right? Excuse yeah. me, you know, this is my wife. And, and just I let them know they just run. Let me tell you what your grandmother used to do. I don't understand my grandmother, Susan. You work in the salon in town, right? I used to wonder why she used to do that. We in the salon or are you working? But there's women coming in the early time. And I, it's, it's a beauty salon. Women come in right there. The woman, and you're not working. I don't work at the wedding ring because things gain. And it's why I'm a wedding ring or nothing. And, and I work in the salon. And a woman come and stand up and talking to me too long. Right? Because your mother running Barataria branch. I, I'm part of Spain with your grandmother. A woman talking to me too long. Your grandma used to come up and say, How are you doing? And this is my son in law, Glenn. You met him? So she, 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 she come up and say, This is my son in law. I used to say, Why is she doing that? Because Shirley is not around there to protect herself. So she has the mother in law come up and say, Well, here what's going on? And this is my son in law, you know. She said, and I'm a son in law, lay off. So the yeah. men now, they'll do like, 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 and like the, um, and like the deacon, um, I'm, I'm Nicholas, and uh, who's that, who the name after the Nicolaitans. And say, okay, man, talking to your wife, and you step away, and you vex with your wife. Step in, because mm -hmm. that's the duty. Love your wife as Christ, and love the church. If you need the devil, come and take away. I want a Christ. Um, 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 uh, so that you belong to Christ. Christ will deal with them. The same yeah. way now, the husband supposed to step in and say, here, what's going on, partner? You, and you see this. Uh, this is my wife. And you say, right to go, yes, and you walk out. Don't feel shame for that. There's nothing insecure about, uh, about that. If a bandit come in your house and want to take your car or your business, wouldn't you protect your, your, your property? Yeah. Your wife is not your property, but protect your wife. You understand the point I'm making? Mm -hmm. Women is the same thing too. Wives do the same thing. And you understand? A woman talking to your husband, go up by your husband and say, okay, how are you doing, darling? Hold his hand. Hold yeah. his hand and, and, and let the person and let the person stand there and look foolish. I have done that many times and the person looks stupid. They just get up and walk away. Mm -hmm. Because you come in to tackle my wife or whatever it is, I'm going to hold my wife and I kiss her in front of you. Right? I kiss her in front of you. Well, and what are you going to do? You're embarrassing yourself. You know why? Because people want to see you tackling my wife. And when I'm, 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 I'm going to see tackling my wife and I'm moving now and kiss my wife, how are you looking stupid? Yeah. And how are you looking? I'm my wife. I'm protecting my wife. Women like men to protect them. And women, will, will, even the Bible talk about men protecting your wife, protecting your, 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 your spouse. Right? Paul spoke mm -hmm. about your being the weaker uh, of the two, right? <clears throat> and, and and you have to do that. So love, love your wife, man. Love your your your, your spouse. Love your children. Love your friends, right? Love uh, I'm, I'm your I'm, I'm your brothers in the church. Love Jesus Christ, right? Because love covers a multitude of sins. I'm, and I'm talking about the church is the bride of Christ. When you go to church and you complain about the past and the preacher, you ain't really love Jesus Christ. But if you have affection for him, now you wouldn't see faults in the church. Yeah. Yo, and if you love your pastor and you, and, and, and you love your, 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 um, 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 your, um, your brothers and sisters in the church, then you won't see faults in them. Because love covers a multitude of sin. And love covers a multitude of faults. False. So if, if, you, if your heart is on fire for Jesus Christ, and if your heart is on fire for your brothers and sisters, you wouldn't see any faults. As a matter of fact, your faults will be hidden. Right? Because as the song says, smoke will be in your eyes. The smoke from the, the fire in your heart is what's going to be in your eyes and you won't see any fault. And let me yeah. go on a little bit. Right? You know? And let's and, and look at um, and, and Proverbs 10 and, and, and verse 12. Hatred, spirit of strife, but love covereth all sin. Love towards man and, 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 and your woman. We're talking about love towards God here because God is love. So love towards your brothers and think hatred is still of strife. But love does hide a multitude of transgression or, or, or trespasses. So, mm -hmm. so, so, seeing what Peter said came from Proverbs 10 and 12. Proverbs 17 and 9 says, He that covereth a transgression seeketh love. If you cover somebody's shortcoming or somebody's fault or somebody's sin, you, you, you seek in love and you seek in that. But he that reap and repeated a matter separated friends, right? Hear, hear what I'm saying here. If I see Sarah do something wrong, gossip is what they're talking about here. You, you hear something about somebody, 
and, 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 and if you cover it up, if you cover up on that on transgression, you will say, well, you know what? I'm seeking love, but I want love to, 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 uh, among all of to us. Prevent. I'm going to tell um, everybody about who I see or who I see do here or what I see do this, right? Because they're a lovely person and they want to love everybody to be and to love one another. So you're covering that transgression. You might talk to the person, but you cover it up. But the people who 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 repeating the thing over and over and saying, Well, I see this and I see that, they they are the ones who separate friends. How many friendships you know have been broken because people repeating gossip to you about somebody else? Many friendships and relationships have been broken because people repeating things about somebody else. Many, many times. Right? And, 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 and it is in, in Proverbs too. Now let me show you another thing about Proverbs. I want to I, 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 I go here. Now, Proverbs 19 and 11 says, The discretion of a man deterred his anger. And it is his glory to pass over transgression. Let me tell you, one of the problems with love here. The discretion of a man, the word discretion here comes from sekel, which is, is Hebrew. Sekel means um, um, understanding or wisdom or wise or knowledge, right? Discretion here means understanding, intelligence, um, wisdom or love. Um, no, not love or, or understanding. Knowledge is where I want to go with this, right? The knowledge of a man defer it his anger. The forward here means to prolong, to keep it going, right? Uh, and, 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 to, and let it live or tarry or, or to lengthen. So the knowledge of a man lengthen his anger and his glory is to pass over transgression or trespass. You know what the writer of Proverbs was saying here, Sarah? You know somebody do something wrong, right? And you're angry. You see somebody and you know somebody do something wrong. And your knowledge, right? And your knowledge or your knowledge of somebody doing you something wrong, it, it, it lengthens your anger because you know they do you something wrong. You know they offend you. You know your husband was unfaithful. You know your wife unfaithful. You know your girlfriend unfaithful. You know and your boyfriend unfaithful. And you know the pastor, um, I'm, do, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this. You know the brother in the church doing that. And you know all these things. And you know, you actually know they do those things. The knowledge, the knowledge you have there of that is what prolongs anger. True. It prolongs your anger. But mm -hmm. it is your glory, your blessing, and it is your peace to pass over the transgression, to forgive, of to, course. To, 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 and to leave it. Right? It's it is up to you. Yeah? It's up to you. Well, it, 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 uh, because, you know, because you know it happened, it's not that you suspect it is going to prolong your anger, your bitterness, your, your, your hate for that person and things like that. Because you know. You see, you know. But it is up to your glory to overlook it. I remember um, that, um, this week, I'm looking at, I'm listening to 98.1, I'm going up on Baratari. Someday, and I'm listening to 98. Uh, so, you, you know, after they preach in the morning, about 10 o'clock, they have like a testimony and thing, right? Mm -hmm. so this one come on, on the testimony crying and bawling and crying and thing. Friday, the, she said, you pray for me on Friday. Come, my husband left me and thing, and he come back and he, he, he left and he go and thing and um and he come back and she called Monday now and saying three days the man stay with me and 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 he, he, he I, I come home from church early to see him he come home I know he take all the clothes and leave he leave me and he gone back with the woman another some other woman who call him so the woman now say well she will continue praying to God for her husband to come back. Continue praying to God. And this is this was a 90th. She'll continue praying to God for her husband to come back. And she say, you, 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 you always go with women and coming back. So the woman now, who is the announcer, tell her. And let me ask you something. This, and this is healthy for you, you know. Your husband, um, I, I was saved. And when I get married to him, she say no. She say, you were saved? She say yes. She say, so what kind of relationship Paulie had before? She say, well, he was like that before marrying. He oh, was a womanizer before she married him, right? Mm -hmm. And this is Christian counseling going on here. He was like that before. So the woman, the, the announcer, saying now, so you need counseling, you know. Because this man destroying you. You push yourself in the, in, in the fire. You went in that, you know. Because yeah. you were saved. You know Jesus Christ is Lord. You're going to church. Yeah. And you know the man. I was 
a woman as a before. So where you feel you man change him? Who will change him? God. But God showed that the man was an, a womanizer before, right? God showed the man was a womanizer. You come now and you get, and you get yourself in a marriage, in, in, in the marriage, knowing the kind of man you get married to, knowing the Bible said do not be unequally you, and all what Paul said, and you grow up in church. You come and you get married to the man, the man is unfaithful and living every week and going. You still praying for God to get out of that? Yeah. You still praying for God to, and so the announcer say, ma'am, you need counseling. Let me talk to you after how the man can be doing you that. And you've seen it. God, God showing you it's, it is not a, a healthy relationship. And you continue to, and, and continue with that relationship and keep praying for God to help you with that. So you have to be careful. God, we, 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 uh, we must be as wise as serpents, but as harmless as does. But it's time to walk away. If the man do need that every time, and every time you go, he do need that, you will stay in that. God himself, Lego Israel. When Israel continue, and you see a lot of people don't follow how God is a prayer, as watch how God is a prayer. When Israel and faithful and go after other gods, what he do? He remove his head of protection and he step away from them and leave them. You understand what I'm saying? He remove himself. He remove the head of protection from around them and he step away. Well, all they go. And when they go through the thing now, he will come back and say, look, I'm going to bring all back after so and so time. When all they learn all their lesson. But mm-hmm. God and didn't take Israel back in this sin. He didn't take Israel back. And when Israel come to go after other gods, he leave them. You understand the point I'm making? Yeah. And, and if, if, if a marriage is like that and a husband or wife continually and, and, or they want to quote Hosea where God tell Hosea and they were that prostitute you know, God was showing Israel what he was experiencing with Israel. But God and character and personality, he don't do that. God don't consistently mm-hmm. do that. You in sin and you could adultery against God, you're going after other God, you, you, yeah. you're going by the obia man and you feel God will just allow that to happen. And continue to get back every time you come back by him. You understand the point I'm making? Mm-hmm. Paul said, crucify Christ all over again. There's no more sacrifice for you. And then, and then Paul said, give them up to a reprobate mind. People like that, they give up to a reprobate mind. A reprobate means unteachable mind. When they will learn, they wouldn't learn any lesson. Paul said, mark those people and give them up to a reprobate mind and don't, don't even talk to them. Why? Because they have mm-hmm. an unteachable spirit. They ain't saved, they repent and they come back. But, 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 Right now, they have unteachable spirit. They can't teach them nothing. They are recognizing mm-hmm. they're doing something wrong. And you know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> when, um, when many hearts on fire, smoke gets in your eyes is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Because if you're love, but you must keep your head on. True. You know? Keep your heart on fire. Keep your heart on fire for your spouse, for your children, for your, your, your immediate family. For your brothers in the church, for your pastor and everybody, keep your heart on fire. Keep your heart on fire, right? And, and you allow know, these... as they say that, um, yeah, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Yeah, I was having a discussion last week with one of my clients, and all two same kind of thing, right? And you know, we kind of went to the source about okay, so like I spoke about you and mommy, right? Mm-hmm. And I told her say. You know, my parents never went through a divorce. You know, I saw my parents take it out, you know, and then she said, you know, Sarah, not because, um, is, no, she, what she said is that I was exposed to all your marriage. That was mm-hmm. my example. Yeah. You understand? But some people stick it out. Remember the singer that they like, and she was being abused by her husband yeah. and he eventually murdered her. Yeah. Right. She no, she say not be just. I just join as a reference. If it is you are abusive to mommy, but it wasn't right. Mm-hmm. And I still see my mother stick it out in my mind. The ideology of a marriage is that to stick abuse. it out during yeah. abuse, it don't matter what you stick it out, but it wasn't mm-hmm. like that. So I told her, I said, I saw my parents go through hard times and they stuck it out, they didn't get divorced, and there was no abuse in it, right. Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing like this lady on the radio just saying, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe that she saw her parents and grandparents go through hardship. It may be something similar on faithfulness, right? And she probably sticking it out because that's what she know. You know, she but, probably saw her mother stick it out through unfaithfulness. And I told but, her, see, that is so true. And not because they do it means it's the right thing to do. 
I, I think the woman from, from Africa, her name is Oshinawa, whoever her name is, Okinawa, yeah. Oshinawa, you remember? Right? Yeah, I think and she died last you, year. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you why she took the abuse. She took that abuse not because um, of her marriage and the husband. She took that abuse because she was a, 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 a gospel singer. And if she had yeah. divorced the husband or leave him, church would have taken her off the pulpit. Yeah. And she would not have been able to sing and praise God. And she was one of the... The, 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 the gospel singers, the African and, and gospel singers I love. Yeah. You know, I used to sit down and she used to sing with passion. Yeah. Sing with passion and she cried out, um, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, while she's singing, but because of religion yeah. and what people go see and, and, the, and, the, and, and, and the rules they put on in churches. I ain't talking about any Bible. I talk about the Church of Jesus Christ. And I talk about man made churches and man made religion and things like that. People go through abuse because, number one, they'll be chastised in church. And number two, uh, uh, what's going to happen? They would not be able to function in the ministry because they divorced. Yeah, yeah. But it is okay. The Bible speaks about, yeah. the Bible speaks about <laughs> Jesus speaks about divorce and remarriage. He never, he never say divorce. He say if a man divorces a remarried, woman for whatever yeah. reason, yeah. he shouldn't marry that woman. Mm -hmm. So why shouldn't somebody who is divorced function in the church? If somebody is divorced in the church for whatever reason, sure, I, 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 I'm a divorce in the church, but being divorced it, in the church is not a not sin. It's not the issue. It's the remarrying. It's part. Somebody yep. who is divorced is a sin. So that yeah. is what a lot, of, a, 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 a lot of ministers and a lot of church, church leaders who who religious and who, who want to keep people in bondage, and that is what they say. But divorce is not wrong in the sense where if there's a proper reason, except for fornication, yeah. right? So somebody yeah. unfit for unfaithful like in, in this woman case the husband unfaithful you divorce him you could divorce him according to what jesus christ himself said but if you divorce him nobody can marry him you understand the point yeah. i'm making if somebody from church married a man and they're wrong but you divorce him because of fornication but a lot of people you know the, the script here go on i, I go to ask the question now so if i divorce a woman i am married and i need church and i divorce a woman because she um, because of fornication, does that mean I'm not supposed to remarry? Tell me. Mm -hmm. If I suppose, because of that person said, I'm supposed to remain single? Mm -hmm. That is the question I want a lot of the people who are talking about to answer. If I am living a, 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 a genuine life, I am genuine in a relationship, I function in a church, I serve in God, I, I serve in Jesus Christ, and my husband or my wife, unfaithful to me, she went with another man, she get catch, Right? And I know she commit um, fornication. Does that mean? And I divorce her because she fornicate. Does that yeah. mean that I cannot remarry? I you know one. Up? You know one of my friends went through that same thing, and she went through counseling with her pastors, right? And mm -hmm. she told me, like how you asked the question. She told me it is okay for her to get married. Because but I her husband want... was unfaithful. I, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Same thing. So you ask any question, like on behalf of her, basically, right? But she yeah. did say that she got the okay to go ahead and remarry, but she didn't remarry, at least not. No, yet. no, but but you see, yeah, your grandfather, your grandfather was one of the the the, the uh, was a preacher, the man who started his ministry. He was a hot evangelist, and because he was involved in a, a, a national denomination, right? His wife divorced. He he had to get divorced. Right, and he remarried, and they, they, he never preached in one of their churches again after that. After mm -hmm. he remarried, he never preached yeah. in another church because they're the religious devils, they haven't half of them. No, I was never divorced, I mean, really care. But the point I'm making now is that we have what to it really God. is, yeah, yeah, true. I'm telling you what I experienced, what I'm seeing with him, it destroyed the man because he could not preach anymore. You know, in the churches, he's a preaching because he remarried, but his wife divorced him. And he, he was not faithful. So, I, so I, he must go through life and live in single. And, and, and living a single life. And, 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 and I don't know who was, I know he was not faithful. But, but, but there was a divorce, right? For whatever reason. And what happened now? Because he remarried, they locked him down. And the woman he remarried. No, but he had this right. So the same girl. And the woman he remarried, husband died. Her the husband died. Her husband died, right? Her husband died. Yeah. So you're telling me her husband died. The so she was widowed. She was already yeah. widowed. So, so you can't marry that woman. That the religious devils 
that, that is keeping people in bondage in churches are right now. That the religious and the that going wrong. And, and, and that is what it is. It is affecting a lot of churches are wrong. People want to keep people in bondage and lock them down. And you know, and you know why they're in bondage? Because they don't know the truth. Read your Bible, read the scriptures, follow the scriptures, read it. Pray and ask the Holy Spirit for guidance. And that's why God and give you the, and the Holy Spirit to guide you and lead you into all truth. But you fall in what, 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 what and people, some people who want to keep you in bondage with. So why yeah. your friend pastor could tell her she could remarry and she go to another church and they say, no, you can't marry. If she was in another ministry, and I get the impression that ministry she was in is a, a private ministry. And he passes the head of that ministry as not a denominational ministry. Yeah, I think so. But I'm what I did not agree with, and what I did not agree with is that she was not at fault in the marriage, right? Basically. Yeah. And yeah. both of them was in ministry, yet yeah. still she had to step down and start all over again. Yeah. And I find that was unfair because who are you to make somebody step down because of something that is not their fault? And to but, start all over again from elementary, but then again, that but is, Sarah, mm -hmm. that person you you talk to a person who we close to in ministry, and the man wife unfaithful to him and divorce him and they, they put him down from any pulpit he couldn't even preach any, anything. That's how illiterate a lot of church and leaders are, and they want to yeah. dominate and they take that same religious demon and bring it in the church. Because those who, if you believe in Jesus Christ, where, 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 where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty not to sin. But there's liberty, and we're and we're we're and, and there's fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. So so you, you are you taking away the and, and the people joy? I, I and you see the reason why we, we could have and this this discussion in an open forum, and that is, is is going on Facebook and all over the, the world, and I just go on my YouTube channel. So we, I I, I so I post a a, a, a a video I get about forty something um, views in, in in about an hour or a day or two. So so what is happening now? We can speak about that. You know why? We know what the Bible says, and we don't have no nobody to answer to yeah. about about that. We and we don't really care if and nobody can take us down from no pulpit because the scholar church and ministry and don't belong to no denomination. Scholar church and ministry belong to Jesus Christ, yeah, and it's part of the body of Jesus Christ. And we speak what the Lord lay in our heart and what is written, the undefiled word of God, and it's nothing about doctrine and theology and all them dotishness that keeping people in bondage you speak about the 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 the, the essence of the word the word mm -hmm. of god and you see we translate what the word is i yeah. tell you what the word of god says i ain't mm -hmm. tell anyone a woman a denomination believe and, and what this thing i tell you what the word of god say and in these last days this, and this is, is what we need because and jesus warned us about being deceived do not be deceived watch and pray look and see what happened and in the last days, there will be apostasy. People will leave the, 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 the faith, the genuine faith, and, and follow with HNS, follow after other gods or whatever it is, making them feel good. And you know? So we have yeah. to follow. I'm not following. I don't and people. I, I don't care who like me. Once Jesus Christ like me, once yeah. I am in the will of God and Jesus Christ like me, I really don't care what man think about me because Jesus said, when they wanted, I wanted to make him king, he said, I know what is in their heart. He know what is in their heart. They will love you today and tomorrow to forget you because you're pleasing them and you're kissing them up to the foot. But I said, I speak in the undefiled word of God and what it is I see in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I don't, and I don't, and, and we don't ask anybody for, for, for offering because we don't care for that. We work for our own money. God bless us with, 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 with our own skill and finances. So we don't have to depend on yeah. nobody offering. You don't like we don't send mm -hmm. no money. Right? And when people call and offer to send us money, you say, Help the people in the neighborhood. Look for a neighbor, a person in the neighborhood, and help them. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah, true. Go send no money. Yeah but, I like, yeah, but I like that scripture when you analyze it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the one who in the clear are they, um, you know, so treat they, a remarry. Yeah, yeah the yeah. one with all the error now. But, you know, you just have to pray about it. And, um, you know, Nobody, just ask God. Uh -huh. a, 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 lot of re, a lot of times and a lot of the reasons for people um, and denominations doing things like that is because of shame, you know. Because they're shame. More, right? more, more, than, more than out of love, it's shame. 
Yeah. And look at what happened to uh, that anointed woman, Juanita Bynum. Because she divorced what amount of Juanita? Look, look at Catherine Coolman. They put out Catherine Coolman from a church in Ohio because she was divorced. Because of how the husband was preventing her. And how many other preachers and ministers were, were anointed who in the will of God. And because of circumstances and because they, their spouse allowed the enemy to come in and, and, and destroy the relationship. They, and they have, are they supposed to not fulfill uh, um, the, the call of God on their life? And, and because of something that happened? Yeah. If God forgive these people, why the, 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 the Christians, the believers can't forgive them? True. If God forgive them, why he can't, or why you can't forgive them? Yeah, true. Who are you to judge another man's servant? Yeah. And you know? True. So, no, if it is, no, if it is you're asking them to step down as part of a healing process, that's all well and good. But not part, but not out of a situation where they weren't the one in error. Yeah. You understand? If it is, if it is, you have to take a sabbatical, like here, what? Take some time to Rest and recuperate. Get your thoughts in order. Mm -hmm. How you expect them to rest and, recu and recuperate when they're not walking in the call? You, you take them down from where they, they, and, and, and they will grow and mature. Now, if you see them not functioning the way they used to function or should function, I can see you asking them to step down. But yeah. I don't see, because they go through a divorce, so you feel they lose their anointing? Why you take them off? Why yeah. do uh, so why they can't heal on the on the thing? On why the pulpit? Yeah, true. Why? Because they're going through that situation in their life. Why they can't minister to somebody who's going through that same situation? Yeah. In a real way and in a, in a way and a way that they could experience. True. It. Yeah, true. Why they because, can't minister to people? Yeah, because God will use you in that situation and all too. And they will speak. God with will more passion. use you. Yeah. Yeah. They speak with more passion and with more knowledge. Half yeah. of the people who so holy they and, and they and never had that experience. So they talk about no. from head knowledge, but they're talking about somebody who actually going through walk that through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so to, to and, and to be interesting and the most interesting two thing is is that to hear what God doing in their life at the point yeah. in time. Yeah. You know, and they will grow. And, uh, they could grow if they ministry are on top there. And I could tell you, some of, some of my strongest times was through those hardest times. Eh? Yeah. Some of my strongest times I ministered. And what the Bible say? Paul say, when I am weak, then am I strong enough. When my, well, he was saying, that when I see my flesh weak, when I see my flesh weak, and my flesh going through some daily time, I, I, I strong enough. Yeah. I understand? When I am mm -hmm. weak, then am I strong. Because I can, yeah. uh, you understand? Yeah, it's true. When your flesh weak, that's when you're at your strongest. When yes. you're emotionally weak, you emotionally think that's when spiritually you're at your strongest because you can't depend on your flesh to take you through that, that presentation or that ministry. So yeah. before you even go to me and say, say, Lord, you help me. See me, I can't handle this now. I leave everything in your hands. And you let the Holy Spirit take charge because your yeah. flesh weak at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, you're, 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 your confidence low. So you have to depend on God. That is when you would be at your strongest. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, and I know. felt it. Yeah, I felt yeah. it and all too. Yeah. So, so you know, you know, maybe one day we may have decisions like that to make. One day both of us may have decisions like that to make in ministry with um staff. I just saying, you know, and we could um you know, we think different, everything feel different about a situation because you know, we've passed through it and seen it happen with Pa and even yeah. in our own personal lives. You know, yeah. so um, we have three different situations kind of happen here. And, you know, we ex what we experience, nothing but the grace of God, as mm -hmm. you said. Nothing but the grace of God is what we experience. You see, and a lot of people take abuse and go through relationships because if you break up, it means... You know, they, they do have the confidence to start over. Because when, mm -hmm. you, when you break up now, you separate, you know, you have to start all over again. Yeah. But you see, with me now, I had no choice. My wife died. So mm -hmm. I understand what breaking up, what, what somebody would go through if they break up. My wife died. I had to yeah. start all over again. But what I did, when my wife died, I, I go through the, the, the grieving process. 
blame myself, this, that, whatever it is, what should I do or what, what I shouldn't do. And when I finished, I went on a 21-day fast. I eating nothing and drinking nothing. I only eating soup in the night. And after that, I lose about 60-something pounds, and it's not pounds, and I beat the gym four days a week after that. And I, I, I build back up my muscle, I get myself in order, and never put back on the weight. And I, and I, I was able to grow from that mm-hmm. and get ready for the next stage of my life. And you know, and people sure, who are afraid sure, of change, afraid of life. Yeah. Eh? And, and I'm sure at those times, it had, those were some of your strongest days. Some it, days it, out of that situation, it could tell your spirit itself. I sure you know, at your weakest point, when you thought it was weak, was one of your strongest points. I, I, was, I was really, I'll tell you, I, I, when I was going through that, uh, I was really um, depending on God to take me through. Because when you, you, you lose a spouse, you lose your wife, you, or I'm sure it happens to people who divorce, and people break up with a boyfriend or a girlfriend relationship, you have, have, have a strange relationship with your son, your daughter, your brother, your sister, your nephews, whatever it is. And you have a strange relationship. Everybody goes through the same thing. But, and you don't know what will happen, but you see, you have to trust God at that time and step back and stop trying to make things happen. Yeah, and let and, and just watch how and look for and you see, you have to look to see how God organizing and my life from here. On. Yeah, what it's I was true. doing is watching, I yeah. was watching how God was orga- and reorganizing my life. Yeah, I it's see, true. I, 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 and I saw where, where He had things in place even before. You, and yeah, your yeah, for example, okay, I'll and, and and I together now, but He, he sent me down. To, to, to her school to visit her on behalf of City and Girls. So you develop a friendship. So it's, it's, it's not a stranger. Everybody know you and you come up, right? Then after that, now I come now, I, I, she died. Fine. I go through my grieving process. You must go through the process. You will get angry first. Then, and then you start to blame yourself. Then you start to weigh the situation. Then you start to get depressed. And, and after you get depressed, then, and then you, and you catch yourself. So it, it's a process. Same way if you break up. Or somebody that you go through a process. So you go through the process, but a lot of people don't like the process. Because mm-hmm. the process is what is, 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 is what takes you from one point to another. I always mm-hmm. tell you, I can't get to Port of Spain if I don't leave San Fernando. Yeah. Kelroy. Hi, Kelroy. Yeah. How are you doing? Kelroy, you sing with mommy in the choir. <laughs> Kelroy, <laughs> sing with mommy in the choir. Kelroy, you said, she said drop him home. She said yeah. tell me to drop Kelroy home. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Kelroy. Thanks for your comment. Yeah. I am all enjoying it, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so the point I'm making and, and the point I'm trying to make now is this, is, is that we have to go through the process. We, we have to leave one um, San Fernando if you want to go to Port of Spain. You can be in San Fernando and Port of Spain at the same time. So you leave San yeah. Fernando and then you go through the journey and you go through a journey to, and to get to Port of Spain. You have to pass to go on or something. So by the time you get to Port of Spain now, yeah, I know some of the times the destination is not as exciting as the journey. There are many times I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've yeah. been at this, but the, 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 the journey, of course, the joy, yeah. I enjoy the journey more than the destination. When I reach, oh God, we reach already. It might, it might be 3,000 miles, but the journey. So, but a lot, a lot of people afraid the journey. A lot of people want, I want, I want to fly to a place or get there um, and, and without actually Fast. going through the process. Quick. And, and when I go through uh-huh. the process now, I mean, I may go through the, uh, uh, and the process of grief, and you go through, uh, uh, you know, that particular process. When you get to, to the, the, the other side, you know, you're stronger. You would, you would, you are not the person you were when you went into the process or when you began yeah. the experience. Yeah, true. And you know, so mm-hmm. these are some of the things we have to look at, and we have to definitely um, um, train people, empower. And you know, mm-hmm. our, our, our divisions of scholarship and ministries is to empower the congregation, empower the people. Because a strong congregation makes for a strong church or a strong assembly. A strong church. A strong, a, a strong assembly. A strong assembly makes a strong community. Right? A strong community would, would then make a strong country mm-hmm. as far as the things of God is concerned. So we want the, the government to change the country when we, in our own separate communities, or congregations, this is where the change begins. And then yeah. from there, we change the community. And when we change the community, now well, then the country better watch out. All the way in the country. So we can't take the country back from the top. You have to start with the community. 
yeah. little, little and, and live and live on the whole loaf. People look at that in a negative way. But if you look at it from a positive perspective, a little bit of us now, we, we, we would um, live on the whole country. Yeah. But we have to start to, 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 to um, create the environment so the leaven will keep increasing and growing. If you throw yeah. hot water on, 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 on yeast, our I will me a kill yeast. So those are some of the things we have to look at. Um, 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 you know, we have to look at those things. Empowering one another. And, the, and these discussions to empower the, 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 and the congregation and people who are looking at it after. And mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want to control anybody. Jesus, I never control anybody. God never control anybody. He empowers his people so that when they step out there now, one is, 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 is everybody, everybody doing it. And, and you know the devil has worked the same way too. Here the devil has do. You see how much bandits and criminals have around? Mm -hmm. They feel everybody's a bandit. Mm -hmm. Or everybody rubbing it. But if everybody come out there and spread the gospel and we do what we're supposed to do and we empower the church, you know, they will still have more good people than bad people now. Yeah. So, and before I, 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 I spread this, is, is, is a whole hour, before I get people calling in their ears now. I only mm -hmm. get people calling in their ears. So, <laughs> you call that. You call so, that we'll today. call it a night. So, the discussion today was when your heart's on fire, right? I just separate the heart and make it into heart is, right? But when your heart's on fire was the topic today. If you missed it. Well, the... I, I, as, as, as Eldon come up now, Pastor KK, you still say, you just eat, yeah, it, you uh -huh. just eat, and then you say when your heart's on fire, um, smoke gets in your eyes. The eyes. Uh -huh. So they, they, they preach on that message, I'm there about 10 years ago, wherever it is. He was saying that don't make decisions based on your heart and, and your feeling. So that was the message. Yeah. Are you making decisions based on how you feel and your heart and your love? But I, I, I use it in a positive way by saying when your heart's on fire, smoke gets in your eyes. And this way you wouldn't see people fall. But I use a different script that our Pastor KK used here, um, years ago. Yeah. I use scripture because he's telling us um, love that are fervently, love each other fervently, which never end in those. Uh, fervently means not to end those stop loving yeah. um, uh, um, uh, uh, um, each other because love hides shortcomings and faults mm -hmm. in, 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 in the people around you. And that's, and that's what we use it today. So. Yes. So if you look in a negative way, I, I, you know, I like, I, and I see when the Bible tells us to you, do, do the work of an evangelist, and, 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 and the Bible also says that God gave to the church apostles, prophets, teachers, and, um, and, and things like that, pastors. He said for the edification and the perfecting of the church. To edify means to build up, uh, and, um, um, and, and to edify it means to build up, to exhort, to teach. And to perfect now is to make the church per and perfect. The evangelist, when Paul yeah. do the work of an evangelist, what an evangelist is not a man who preaching and winning souls. An evangelist is a, 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 a bearer of good news. So when Paul was saying be an evangelist or do the work of an evangelist, he said to bring good news, bear good news. Yeah. Because the goodness of God that, 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 that um, and, and lead that man to repentance. So bring good news. Don't, don't, don't and tell people about the whole comment I had. Tell them about the goodness of Jesus Christ and watch men get saved. And you know, yeah. and see how much people repent and things like that. So um I, I just thought I should say that for the record. <laughs> okay. So yeah, we'll call it tonight if you've missed it, right? Um, it will be the recording. You broadcast in a matter of fact, it's on a recording. Where's the recording? It will be yeah. available just as we finish. So we'll wrap up. Well, we'll well, be our road match. Speak. Or Sarah, if they want to see, if they want Anyone. to see, if they want to see everything, every discussion we had so far, they could go on on Anthony Dawson, YouTube? Anthony Glenn Dawson YouTube channel, and they'll see all the um all the discussions there on that times of refreshing. Yes, and it's also available right here on the page as well too, as yes. you scroll down yes, for the past it. two years or whatever the case. Yes. So we'll wrap up. We'll close yeah. with a word of prayer and then we'll pay, play our road march advice from the heart written and recorded in the studio right here by um, our very own, my dad, Anthony Glenn Dawson. And um, I just say, you know, he just asks me to do the video. <laughs> I'm not that, <laughs> I'm not no professional. He just asks me to do I the video. You. But I yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, I say that like, I say that actually, I say that actually like, um, oh, um, 
how LL Spencer used to preach long oh. time. Yes. <laughs> <From the pond. laughs> I see for right. a long time. I know what you're doing. I see him on Facebook. LL Spencer, boy. Yeah. yeah. Um, right? So stay tuned. At- we do there? I wonder. <laughs> All right. So let's go. Heavenly Father, we just bless your name again this afternoon, oh God, Lord. We just thank you for your word. We thank you for clarity of your word. We thank you for revelation in your word, oh God, Lord. But Lord, most of all, I ask, oh God, for your viewers, for the listeners to read your word for themselves and ask, call on the Holy Spirit to help reveal what you said in your word, oh God, Heavenly Father. We pray, pray tonight that you just bless every hearer. We pray, oh God, that this would fall on good ground and that it um, take root on good soil and that that um, harvest would reap an abundance for your kingdom and for your glory. As you continue, oh God, Lord, to um, establish a kingdom here upon the earth, oh God, Lord. And we just thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, from all of us here at Scholar Third Ministries, have a good night. We love you all. Stay strong. And don't forget, when your heart's on fire, fire. let the smoke go in your eye. <laughs> let the smoke go in your eye. Let the smoke go in your eye. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. So, have a good night and take a listen. Advice from me, heart. Take care and see you soon. Bye. Bye. I sit down to write a gospel so Cause I hear it too much smart on the radio Right from the start I make up my mind The past never singing about no drum and wine I write a song just to win a crown But to edify the love and to make you strong Who don't want to hear, well then they go feel The adversary come to kill and to steal I want my friends and them go to hell when Basil come and start to ring up the bell I hope you don't mind, I'm trying to give advice The only way to make it is to follow Christ He came down here to show all of us the way So we wouldn't have no problems on judgment day In these days with knowledge on the increase We got to guard against the mark of the beast The earth is full of violence and full of hate We must be patient and keep the faith Let not your heart be troubled, you must be bold Though the love of many people wax in coal Man look up and don't you submit to fear It's just your redemption that's drawing near And I want my friends and them go to hell when Basil come and start to ring up the bell I hope you don't mind, I'm trying to give advice The only way to make it is to follow Christ He came down here to show all of us the way So we wouldn't have no problems on judgment day Said in his heart that there is no God The beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord Look how much a quick hurricane and flood It's time to repent and get under the blood I'm telling you my friends, look all your are blind The days we live in is the end of time You can try to run but you cannot hide Very soon the groom coming for the bride and I want my friends and them go to hell When Basil come and start to ring up the bell I hope you don't mind, I'm trying to give advice The only way to make it is to follow Christ He came down here to show all of us the way So we wouldn't have no problems on judgment
if things so bad you feel there's no hope You want to give up because you just can't cope No matter how you try you feel your hand distress Do your sacrifice and you try your best I want you to remember the man from the cross Who came down here so far, now he is the boss Don't forget the grin may last for one night And the darkest hour comes right before the light Lord, I hear what my friends and them go to hell When Basil come and start to ring up the bell I hope you don't mind, I'm trying to give advice The only way to make it is to follow Christ He came down yet to show all of them the way So they wouldn't have no problems on judgment day I am the pastor And I declare that no weapon formed against you shall prosper And any tongue that rises in judgment against you, you will condemn. For that is the inheritance of the children of God. Be strong. <laughs>